Welcome to our tutorial about the SOLIDWORKS 2013 User Interface. Let's begin by creating a new document. Here's the new document dialog window. And from this window, we've got the option to create a part document, an assembly document, or a drawing document. Let's click on the Advanced button at the bottom left. From this page, we can choose the templates Part, Assembly, Drawing. And let's go back to the Novice page. For this tutorial, I'll create a part document, so let's select it and click OK. SOLIDWORKS creates the new part document and opens it for us, so here we are inside the part document. There's this white area in the middle of the screen. It's known as the graphic area, and this is where you'll be doing most of your work, performing most of your actions. The graphic area is where we work with part documents, assembly documents, and drawing documents. Now let's take a look at the left panel. There's some icons onto the ribbon. That's what I want to talk about next. The first button takes us to the Feature Manager design tree, and that's where we are right now. Next, we've got the Property Manager. Next button is the Configuration Manager, Dim Expert Manager, and finally, the Display Manager. At the top of the screen, SOLIDWORKS uses a ribbon-based Command Manager. On the ribbon, with a left click, we activate a variety of commands depending upon our environment. Features, Sketch, Sheet Metal, assembly, and so on. The environments are chosen by clicking on the tabs below the ribbon. When I mouse over a tool for a couple seconds, a callout appears, that you see here, and the callout explains what the tool does. Here you see the extruded boss base extrudes a sketch into a solid feature. If you right-click on the tabs, this is how you can add or remove tabs from the ribbon. The visible tabs are indicated with the check marks. If you want to add another tab, just select it from that list. The same right click drop down menu gives us the option to customize the command manager. Let's click on that. So here we can enable or disable the command manager. Check here to use large buttons with text. We also have more options on the right to use large icons to show the tooltips. If we right-click on the tools, we get a few more options. We can show or hide the text. We can put the text below. We can begin a group. And we can delete the tool from the ribbon. The next tab in the Customize window is the Shortcut Bars tab. Here we choose from four environments. The first is Part. Next is Assembly. Next is Drawing, and here is the Sketch environment. This right here is the actual toolbar. It kind of looks like an image on the dialog window, but it's the actual floating palette. To add an icon, just grab and drag it on, and to delete it, drag it back off. Let's click OK. So this toolbar appears and disappears by clicking S on your keyboard. Another way to access this toolbar is via the Options menu. Let's go to Customize. Let's take a look at the third tab now, the Commands tab. This is where we access commands associated with a particular category. To place a command, just drag it and drop it. To remove a command, just grab and drag it back. Or you can also just right-click and select Delete from the contextual menu. We've got the ability to create custom tabs in SOLIDWORKS. Let's left click here and select Empty Tab. And we can rename it. Let's call it My Tab. And once again, just drag and drop any desired command on this tab. To delete the tab, just right click and select Delete. Now let's take a look at the Menus tab. Here we can customize the commands that are available on the Windows Standard Menu Strip. 
Let's take a look at the Keyboard tab next. Here's where we create custom shortcuts. So let's just click in the cell and delete the shortcut that was there. Now let's press the shortcut, Control w and here is our new shortcut. So hold down the Control key and the W key simultaneously. Let's check out the Mouse Gestures tab. And let's actually close the Command Manager window so I can show you what mouse gestures are. First, let's hide My Tab. So we'll right-click on any tab and unselect My Tab. Okay, now when I right-click and move the mouse, I've got four different tools available here. To activate the tool, just move the mouse over that tool. The tool is going to be different depending upon the environment that you're in. Let's go back to the Customize window, Mouse Gestures tab. Check here to enable mouse gestures. We can also use a wheel with four gestures or eight gestures. Here we can specify the commands that are available on the wheel depending upon the environment that you're in, whether part modeling, assembly, drawing, or sketching. Right now, I've got eight mouse gestures available. The arrows show me in which position they're going to appear. To change the position, just select it from this drop-down menu. Or you can select a different tool altogether. Mouse gestures can be sorted by part, assembly, drawing, or sketch. We can also opt to show commands with mouse gestures only. And we can select mouse gestures by category as well. Next, let's take a look at the Options tab. Here we customize the menu, the shortcuts, and the workflow. We can show all customization, and we can reset to factory defaults. Let's click OK. Up top here, you see the standard Windows icons, New File, Open, Save, Print. The Standards Windows menu strip, you can pin it down by clicking on the pin icon. To unpin it and let it collapse, just click on the pin again. Right here are some search options. If we click on this arrow, you'll see the options that are available, SolidWorks Help, Knowledge Base, Community Forum, Commands, Files and Models. Below the Command Manager is what's called the Hang-Up Toolbar. Here we've got Zoom, Previous View, Section View, Pan, View Orientation, etc. To add or delete commands from the Hang-Up Toolbar, just drag and drop them right up to the Hang-Up Toolbar. We'll go back to the Customize window, click on Commands, select a command, and drag and drop it right up there. OK. Let's explore docking and undocking options. For example, I can grab the Property Manager and dock it in one of four different positions. Or I can just let it float freely right in the graphic area. We can also grab and undock the Command Manager and dock it in a different position. I'm going to dock it back on top. On the right-hand side, I've got a few icons here. This is known as the Task Pane. We can pin down the Task Pane, and we're also able to undock it so that it floats freely. The first tab here it takes us to SolidWorks Resources. So this is where we can find SolidWorks Resources online and the online SolidWorks community. Next is the Design Library, and this is where we can store reusable parts like bolts and screws, etc. The 3D Content Center is how you share reusable resources with SolidWorks users around the globe. Next, we've got File Explorer. This is how you navigate through your parts and files and folders. The View Palette is next. Appearances, Scenes, and Decals. 
So from here we can access a variety of different scenes and appearances, etc. And the last tab we've got here is for custom properties. We're going to explore this a little bit later on. Before we move on, let's take a minute to see how the search function works. Let's go to Files and Models, and let's type in some text. Click on Search. So here SolidWorks finds the files that match our search criterion. To close, just click anywhere in the graphic area, and the task pane will collapse. At the bottom of the screen is what's called the status bar. If you don't see it currently, you can bring it in by going to the View menu and scroll down to Status Bar. The status bar shows us which mode we're in, part editing mode, sketch editing, etc. Currently, we're in part editing mode. Now let's create a sketch. Now we see that we're in sketch editing mode. The status bar also lets us know that my sketch is currently underdefined. From here, we can select the units. Right now, we're in MMGS, that's millimeters, grams, and seconds. Let's place a rectangle here now. And I'll select these two sides of the rectangle and apply an equal relation. Now let's apply some dimensions. And as you see, the status bar shows us that my sketch is now fully defined. Let me mention a few words about the Dimension Input dialog window. First here, we can specify a dimension name. Let's say My Dim, for example. Down below, we enter a numeric value, let's say 40 millimeters. We've got the option to specify units as well. Or I can input a value of 1 inch, and I do that with the letters IN. Let's regenerate the model by clicking the traffic lights icon. Notice that I inputted one inch, but the dimension shows up in millimeters here, and that's because we're in the metric environment. Let's change this value to 20 millimeters. We can also use the scroll wheel to apply dimensions, or click the up and down arrows. To set the spin increment value, just click here. And to enter the increment value, you just do it right up here. Let's cancel out of this dialog window. We've also got the option to use positive and negative values here. Let's click Accept. And press Escape on your keyboard to exit the Dimension tool. The red and green traffic lights next to our sketch here indicate that the model needs to be rebuilt. When I rebuild a model, I exit the sketch as well. To get back to my sketch for editing, just right-click and select Edit Sketch. To save and exit a sketch, you click on this icon in the confirmation corner. Or to disregard your changes and exit anyway, click on the red X. Let's exit our sketch. Next on the toolbar is the Quick Tip Help. The tips that appear depend upon the environment you're in. So for example here I can create a solid part or a sheet metal part, or I can edit my sketch. Let's select Edit Sketch. SolidWorks lets me know what I've got to do. Right-click the sketch and select Edit Sketch. If I click Create Solid Part, it gives me some other instructions. It'll also show me the tooltips as well. Let's hide the tooltips now. Next, we've got the Tag dialog window. Let's select the sketch, and let's add a tag. I'll type My Tag. Now the name My Tag is assigned to Sketch 1. I can search for this sketch now by the tag name in the design tree. So here my sketch was filtered out. To hide the status bar, you can go to View on the main menu strip and unselect Status Bar. 
If you press F11, you go into what's called full screen mode, and this maximizes your working area. To exit full screen mode, just press F11 again. You can also go to View and select full screen mode from this menu. Anytime you right click in the graphic area, you'll get a contextual menu that depends upon the environment you're in and what you're clicking on. If you want to exit that contextual menu or auto collapse it, just click in any blank space in the graphic area. Now let's take a look at the options dialog window. We've been to it before and we're going to be looking at it in more detail later on. We've got the system options and document properties tabs. Here we have a number of options. Let's say units, for example. We set that up in the status bar a few minutes ago, remember? We're going to be looking at both of these tabs many times in this course. Let's cancel out of this window for now. And this concludes our overview of the SOLIDWORKS interface.